Today I wanted to talk about the new point system in Warhammer 40k. It's so much easier to use, but it might have a few disadvantages compared with the old one. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I just wanted to have a quick discussion as to the new point system. So in the new Space Arena Necron Codexes, Games Workshop completely redid the way they organised points for various different units. On the top right was how they used to do it, they used to have an individual line per unit, and then another individual line for every bit of war gear, ranged in melee, and any special equipment that the unit was equipped with. While it did have the option of Games Workshop being able to give a value both to the unit and the piece of war gear, I found it an absolute nightmare for building army lists with, as first of all you had to look at the unit's datasheet, find the actual unit's base points cost, which often didn't include large parts of their gear, and then if you wanted to be careful and you weren't massively familiar with the faction, you had to go through and check every bit of ranged war gear they had, including things like pistols, every melee weapon that the unit had, and even then you had the potential to be caught at by other bits of war gear, say for example camo cloaks on units like eliminators, which they come with as standards, but still had to have a points cost because they were optional on things like Space Marine Scouts. Honestly, it took a long time and it was a bit of a mess. It also meant that if you managed to overlook any gear, then you'd wind up undercosting your units, which isn't really very good from a fair play sort of perspective. I would genuinely like to say thank you to the person who decided to redesign this system, giving us the system that we have on the bottom right, where every single unit has its base points cost, and all simple war gear is assumed to be included, unless any piece has a specific cost written directly under the unit, so you don't have to jump about between the unit itself and three different bits on the melee and ranged war gear list. I can just look at my impulsor, say, know that it's 110 points to start with, and if I give it an iron hail stubber and a missile array, then it's going to be 135 points. It makes it really easy to analyse a unit, rather than say having to go to battle scribe and flick through each of the options on there. Another quite decent advantage to this system is that points cost can be tailored to the unit in question. Some armies had variations in ballistic skill between different units, and that can make things far more efficient on one unit than another. For example, for space marines, you have servitors in the army, which have worse ballistic skill than the standard marines, though in the old system would still pay the exact same amount for their heavy weapons. In the new book, servitors only pay 5 points per heavy bolter upgrade, whereas space marine infantry pays 10 points, and vehicles that can move and fire without penalty tend to pay 15. The same goes for powerful melee weapons such as Thunderhammers, which they now seem to have given different values to based on the number of attacks that the model has, so it now costs you a little bit more on an Intercessor Sergeant with 3 attacks than it does on a Tactical Squad Sergeant with 2. I'm certainly not claiming that everything in the Space Marine Codex is balanced by any stretch of the imagination, but at least it gives them a bit more options for being able to. Finally, I do quite like the way that base gear can now be folded into the unit's costs. Say for example those camo cloaks on the Eliminators, they're now just stock part of the unit's base cost as you can't remove them, and they can still cost 2 points per for scouts. It's good for removing just one extra thing that you need to add up. I do feel though that despite these gains in efficiency, there might be a few drawbacks to balancing points per unit. One being that you might have to reprint a piece of war gear's name many times over, say in the old Codex Space Marines you would have just needed one line for a melter gun for example, compared with now where you'll need to reprint the word melter gun every single time you have a unit that uses it, though they have saved a little bit of space by going to 3 columns per page, and it doesn't look too cluttered to me. I still think that they could probably fit all the points changes in one big Munitorum handbook if they wanted to. Even the fairly ridiculously sized Codex Space Marines with its almost 100 data sheets only goes to four and a half pages, so maybe it isn't really all that big an issue. In terms of rebalancing things, it might be a little bit harder to tweak one piece of problematic war gear. Say for example, if Games Workshop decided that they priced Lightning Claws too cheaply in Codex Space Marines, and they wanted to increase them by a small points bump, they'd have to issue quite a lot of erratas to change it under each unit entry, or just wait until they reprinted the entire points values in full. It just wouldn't be quite as easy as previously, or you could just say change the Lightning Claw entry to this points value if it was needed. Finally, while I've gone down this approach, Games Workshop really does seem to like making as many pieces of war gear in the codex a multiple of 5 points. I suspect it is probably to try and make nice round numbers when you're building and constructing armies, but it doesn't always mean that you wind up with a nice round number anyway, say if you had an odd number of 19 point assault intercessors. That unit still isn't going to end in a multiple of 5, despite Games Workshop's best efforts. Also, the few random little bits of war gear that do cost less than 5 points will throw this off anyway, and give you a bit of an odd number at the end. Strangely enough, most units seem to conform to this, but the occasional ones don't. I thought that the Vanguard Veteran option in the Codex Space Marines was really interesting, as they seem to have given them a flat 2 or 3 point discount on all power weapons. 
perhaps just to try and incentivize their use on the unit. That means that you have weird things like Power Fists on 8 points and Thunder Hammers on 12 points, which don't really tend to manifest virtually anywhere else. I think that the main problem with making everything a multiple of 5 does mean that you're going to have a lot more cases where one thing is just the obvious pick over another. For example, going back to Lightning Claws, in most cases they cost 5 points, just the same as Power Swords or Power Axes, though against pretty much every target in the game, the Lightning Claw does slightly better. It's not much better though, and if they went up to 10 points, then they'd be overcosted by a long way. Really, I think that their value is just a little bit better than a Power Sword or Power Axe at 5 points, but a bit worse than, say, a Power Fist at 10 points. By not allowing themselves any room to manoeuvre in between, it does mean that they have to come down either undercosted or overcosted. I'm sure there's plenty of other examples out there, and I'd personally be all for them adding a bit more granularity again. The new point system is already so much more simple and easy to add up than it was, that adding a few odd numbers in there isn't really the worst. So let me know what you think of the new point system yourself. Personally, I'm a really big fan, though there might potentially be a few teething issues for balance changes in the future. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. And if you've been enjoying a lot of the videos recently, I'd just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. The channel's Patreon is what allows me to make quite so many videos quite so regularly, and if you are enjoying quite a lot, then any support is massively appreciated. Channel Patreons get access to a video per week early, there's regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and channel patrons also entered automatically into the channel's monthly prize draw with a chance to win some big model kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.